If you think all the way back to when we first wrote down the Laplace transform, we uh, wrote it down in the context of linear differential and integral operators. And so, you know, you might wonder, well, wait, is the Laplace transform linear? Let's actually check. So let's calculate, let's say we have two functions that have Laplace transforms, and we have a couple constants, a and b, and uh, let's figure out what is the Laplace transform of this linear combination of the functions, f and g. So, well, the Laplace transform is an integral. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times your function. And our function is a times f of t plus b times g of t dt. So what can we do with this? Well, right here between the exponential and the brackets, that's genuine multiplication. And since it's multiplication, we can just distribute e to the minus st. So we get integral from 0 to infinity of a times e to the minus st times f of t plus b times e to the minus st times g of t dt. But look, this integral is an integral is also a linear operator. So we can distribute this integral and move the constant multiples outside the integral. So that's going to give us a times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt plus b times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st g of t dt. Okay, so this doesn't look much better unless you notice that this integral here and this integral there, those are things we already have a name for. The first integral, that's the Laplace transform of f. And the second integral is the Laplace transform of g. Oops, that should be a bracket. Okay, so remember what we started with. What we started with was the Laplace transform of AF plus BG. And this is what we ended up with. So it looks like the Laplace transform distributed over sums and constant multiples move outside the Laplace transform. So that means the Laplace tr transform is linear. In fact, every uh, integral transform built out of a kernel function will be linear for exactly the same reason as this one. You uh, write down your integral transform, distribute the kernel, move the constant outside the integral, and then you get the transform of each piece. So this is going to make it, this fact, this uh, fact that li the Laplace transform is linear, together with some of the basic Laplace transforms that we know, is going to make <coughs> calculating Laplace transforms of many functions uh, much more straightforward than it would be doing them by hand. So for example, let's calculate this Laplace transform. Now, I would not want to do this one by hand. It would take a whole page worth of writing. Um, when I say by hand, I mean using the actual integral formula of the Laplace transform. Right? I wouldn't want to take this function and put it in here. That, that would be a mess. Doable, but a mess. But we know some facts about the Laplace transform. So first of all, the, the Laplace transform is linear. So we can distribute the Laplace transform and move constant multiples outside of the Laplace transform. So that gives us 4 times the Laplace transform of e to the 2t plus 3 times the Laplace transform of t plus 4 times the Laplace transform of 1. All right, so I played a little game with this 4 here by writing it 4 times 1 and then moving the 4 outside of the Laplace transform. And if you look at these Laplace transforms that we have left to calculate, these are all Laplace transforms that we already know. The Laplace transform of e to the 2t is 1 over s minus 2. The Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared. And the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. 
So for our Laplace transform, we get two, oh, sorry, four over s minus two plus three over s squared plus four over s. Now for this first part to be defined, we needed s to be greater than two. For these second and third parts to be defined, we needed s to be greater than zero. And so for this whole thing to be defined, right, we have to choose the most restrictive of these conditions, which is s is greater than two. So this is the Laplace transform of uh, four, four times e to the two t plus three t plus four and s has to be greater than two for this to be the Laplace transform. So you can see um, with a few basic Laplace transforms and linearity, we can calculate a lot of Laplace transforms without ever doing that terrible integral.